Hello everybody, welcome back to Plain Simple. Today we got a special opportunity. We're gonna look at this engine. At that engine, but we're gonna look at the inside of it. And by looking inside, I mean really take a good look inside and all the pieces that go in there. Stick around, this is gonna be interesting. All right, in this video, we're gonna do a little bit of the theory behind the engine, what each component does according to the training manual, and we are also gonna look at individual components. Physically, in reality, get to look at the components that build up the engine. In the process, we're gonna learn what they do, read the description, and we'll get to look at the combustor. So we're gonna do a little bit of classroom style theoretics following the manual, and we're also gonna look at the physical pieces that they're usually hard to see for people that are not into building engines. Um, that's what we're gonna look at today. And we're gonna start with the front of the engine, which would be the fan. This engine is a, an AS907, or a HTF 7000 by Honeywell and it is a two spool dual spool turbo fan engine and what you're looking at now is the fan blades that go in the front of the engine these fan blades get mounted with those uh, dove dovetails to the fan hub. This is the fan hub. And let's get some light in here. This fan hub, you can see the blades would go in here. That fan hub gets mounted to the front of the engine on and connects to this, this shaft. This shaft runs all the way through the engine where you would have the fan hub and all the fan blades on one end the shaft running through the engine and you would have the low pressure turbine at the very end of it now let's look at that on in the engine itself all right we are now in the front well not in but around the front of the engine this is the front case the main structural mounting point of the engine to the airframe and this here is the inlet of the engine. Through there you would have the shaft coming out to mount the fan hub and then the fan blades mounted all around. So you have this is the front of the engine, you would have air going in that direction. Not not in there. You only have a shaft going in through there. But this would be looking through a bypass duct of the engine. Those are the stators, and you would have the fans and blades spinning in here. So this is the front of the engine looking back with the fan hub and the fan blades removed. This is where you would have the fans, the fan, single stage fan, and all the fan blades blowing air through a bypass duct to create thrust out the back of the engine. This here, this is a, a, a reinforced ring. This is a Kevlar uh, ring all around the case of the engine, right where the fan blades are. So in, in the case that you have a fan blade failure and it becomes detached, this would contain it. This Kevlar ring would contain it and prevent the fan blades from breaking through the case and into the fuselage and creating more damage. This is the Kevlar containment ring. This here is your FADAC, your ECU. FADAC, full authority digital engine control. This is your uh, engine uh, computer. And looking back over here, let's keep going. We have, we're looking through the case, the back of the case. We were just up there, now we're looking through here. This is the back of the stators. 
this is still within the bypass duct and in here we're looking at the high pressure compressor the high pressure compressor on this engine is made up of a an axial uh, compressor that I believe is five stages we'll go verify that in the book and one single centrifugal uh, stage which is if you look at the shape of this is right here this here this is where the one single centrifugal stage is at the first two stages of stators uh, stator veins here are variable stator veins and these are the uh, unison rings and all the levers to each individual each individual stator so this would be the pivot point of the stator so attached to that bolt you have a stator inside of there that changes angle same as here and these rings are the ones that get actuated from the other side of the engine they ro they rotate they turn and as they turn they turn each one of these levers to turn every single stator at the same time keep them all synchronized so these are the two the first two stages of, of veins from the axial compressor section of the compressor and that raises the pressure and temperature feeding the single stage centrifugal compressor which is here and that blows the air out and it goes into a diffuser and we'll look at that now we're a little further back in the engine now but now you can see still that there's your engine case the stators from the fan case back there here's your compressor the axial stages of the compressor and then your centrifugal stage, which goes through the diffuser, the swirler to straighten out the airflow. You can see the airflow coming in that direction. Engine is turning in that direction clockwise when viewed from behind. You can see the de swirlers to point the airflow coming off of the compressor, coming out through here, being fed into this here you would have the diffuser and uh, the combustor the combustor in this engine is a single annular type combustor that sits all the way around over here and we're going to go look at that uh, a little more in detail because it, it's a view that we never get to see but right here this is this is the highest point the, the point of the engine that has the highest pressure of the entire engine is right here right at the compressor discharge right at the diffuser from here back you have the compressor not the compressor pardon me combustor the combustor is here burning all the fuel you would have 16 fuel nozzles arranged radially all around feeding a spray of fuel into the combustor it gets ignited that's where the air is heated up by by burning the fuel and it is fed into the turbines making its way back but the combustor fits right here. The combustor annular type goes right here all the way around. And we're looking into the compressor discharge. And Going further back in here you would have like I said the combustor which we're going to look at now and then beyond that you have the turbine section which we're also going to look at but <clears throat> if you look at this if you look through this you see how that's hollow then hollow shaft goes all the way to the front of the engine that is where the shaft connects connecting the rear most low pressure turbine which would be about here that's connected through that shaft all the way to the front of the engine and hooked up to the fan in the front of the engine though. So the rearmost turbine, that's the low pressure turbine, runs it's connected through the shaft, through the engine, to the front of the engine, connected to the fan. That is the second spool. One spool, the high pressure turbines, is connected to the compressor. And the second spool, the second shaft, is connected only to the fan 
We're going to look at all that now. All right, and now we're looking at one of the most interesting pieces in this whole engine, and that is the combustor. The combustor is uh, all stainless steel, and in here, this would be radially arranged here. That is where you get the fuel nozzles spraying fuel into the inside of the combustor. As you can see, it is an annular type, meaning that it's an annulus or ring and arranged radially all around you have you would have they're not here now but you would have fuel nozzles spraying fuel right into here 16 of them spraying fuel all around and the compressor discharge air right from the diffusers and the deep swirlers to straighten out the airflow would be flowing all around here and through here you're going to notice Lots and lots of little tiny pinholes. Lots and lots of tiny pinholes on the outside of the combustor, as well as on the inside. What that does is you have high pressure air flowing all around the combustor, but the only way that it can come out through the other side in here this is all sealed up once mounted inside of the engine that's all sealed up as well as this side over here is all sealed up so the only way that the air has you know, the compressor air has to leave the engine through the back of the engine is to be fed through the combustor walls through all these holes and to mix up with the fuel that's being sprayed in here from the, from the fuel nozzles so now you have air cool, cooler air from the compressor being squeezed in from all sides from all sides of the combustor being pressed in to mix with the fuel that's inside of the combustor that's where it gets burnt but the flames never touch the walls of the combustor because there's air being squeezed in constantly to control the frame the flames inside of the combustor but never touching the walls this is one of those uh rare opportunities at least in my case to look at one of these combustors and look inside of one of these engines in such detail so right now we're looking inside of the combustor right where the fuel nozzles would be if the fuel nozzles were there they would be spraying fuel in your face right now And you can see inside all the pinholes on the walls, on the inner wall, as well as the as well as the outer wall. You can picture all of the air coming off of the compressor, rushing in through every one of those little pinholes, keeping the flame from the burning fuel contained within the combustor, but not touching the walls. As well, the, the walls are also coated. For, uh, with a thermal barrier, thermal coating, to, to protect the combustor, make it uh, make it last longer, give it some longevity. But now you see, there you go. It's a, a rare opportunity, at least for me, to to look at the combustor. Maybe that uh, helps understand a little better how these work. So you have air rushing in through here from the compressor which is up this way this is forward on the engine this is aft on the engine air rushing in through here and from all around through the walls and only being able to escape through this center section and that the air that leaves there goes down directly to the turbines we're going to go look at the turbines now this is one of the turbine assemblies that's taped up to keep everything in one, one unit, in one assembly. I'm not sure which stage um, this is, but you get the point. This would be directly, first you would have nozzles, guide um, exhaust nozzles pointing the airflow coming off of a combustor and directing it to, at the proper angle to the turbine. You would have 
several stages. I believe there's three stages of high pressure turbine. You would have three stages of this. Stacked up back to back. And we'll, we'll look at the manuals. We'll look at the books now. But this would be right after the combustor. You have nozzles guiding the flow at the optimal angle, and then you have turbines. And these high pressure turbines are connected to to drive the compressor, not the fans. The fan is the low pressure um, turbine. And these are housed in the turbine section, which we're going to go look at now. This is not the turbine section. This is just uh, another stage of turbines. Very much just like the one you just saw. I just wanted to show that this is another uh, another stage. You have several stages of, I believe, three stages of these turbines. Yeah. Now let's look at the turbine stage uh, section. All right. Now we're looking at this is the turbine section. Front of the engine would be down this way. The back of the engine is up this way. This here is right after the combustor. The combustor and its liners and its, its case would bolt up to here. And it would be feeding the hot air after burning the fuel. And hot air would be fed into the different stages of turbines. I believe you have three stages of high pressure turbine and then the uh, aft most low pressure turbine. Which is the one that drives the fan through that shaft that runs all the way through the engine that we looked at earlier. Mounting, uh, the rear mounting point of the engine. And then looking through the turbine section. Let's get some light. And these exit uh, guide rings, exhaust guide, guide rings, are called exit guide rings. They straighten out the flow of air from 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 that direction to to an actual direction to shoot straight out the back of the engine. And you can see here that they are shaped like airfoils. I believe there's cooling air flowing through these two since they're hollow. Then take a look at these seals. Right, looking down, this would be the for looking from the back of the engine, looking forward. You have shafts here and whatever. This is maybe a bearing housing. Again, it, it, listen, I, I am not an expert on on these engines. I am an apprentice at best. But I had the opportunity to show this, so I wanted to share with more apprentices out there. So I wanted to show you in this house in here that seal. That seal is a honeycomb pattern, it's all metal. And I believe that is an upgradable material. That is, that is the turbine section of these engines. Which bolts up to the rear of the engine right behind the, com the, the combustor. And one, one last view of the engine. With the way we're looking at the engine now, the inside uh, bypass air duct is removed as well as the outside bypass air duct. Normally you would have to create a, a duct, the bypass air duct. You need an inner liner and an outer liner to create a cylindrical duct all around the engine to get the air from the fan around the engine and out the back of the engine. Those inner 
uh, inner duct liners are removed. The outside one, the outer bypass air duct, is here. This is it. So the front of the engine will be here. This would be the back of the engine. And inside of here you would have the rest of the core of the engine and the inside liners. And between one and the other is the bypass air um, duct. This would be the jet nozzle. This here. This cone is what accelerates this is a converging nozzle that would take all the air coming through the engine and squeeze it down to a narrow through a narrowing path, accelerating it out the back, increasing its speed, producing thrust. This piece over here, this clamshell that you see here, is part of the reverse thrust mechanism. So if we look inside. It's kind of hard to see because everything is painted black. But that would be a hinge point. The actuator, the other hinge point on this side. And this door would swing open and on this half and this one mating one on the other side. Now let's take a look inside of the uh, bypass air duct, the outside duct, which is not much to look at, it's an empty case. But normally you would have, this is where the engine lives, though the engine core lives inside of here. And this barrel, this structure here, is the case that would go bolted up to here, and that would provide the outside case of the bypass air. The last thing that we're going to look at here before we go hit the books is this thing. This, if you have seen another one of my videos, uh, this is the exhaust gas mixer. This flowery looking thing is mixing bypass air, rushing in through the outside of this, with the exhaust from the core of the engine, which is coming through the inside. And this mixer, what it does is impinges or mixes in cool uh, bypass air coming in through here and it forces it to follow that path inward here as well as forcing the hot gases from the hot section from the core of the engine forces that to squeeze out here intermixing cool and hot flow. So every one of those veins is mixing cool bypass air with the hot flow from the inside of the, the core of the engine so that you have a more uniform temperature airflow before it goes out the uh, the jet nozzle on the back of the engine. All right guys, uh, now we're back in class. Class is in session. Um, now we're gonna do the, the book portion of this, but it's pretty cool. So don't, don't get discouraged, this is gonna be pretty cool. As an introduction, this is the um, AS907 uh, turbofan engine or the HTF 7000, a Honeywell engine. It is a turbofan engine that is a two spool engine and uses a one stage uh, fan operated by a low pressure turbine, the low pressure spool. The fan, like we saw earlier, is this. This is the fan case. This would be the Kevlar containment ring that we looked at earlier. These are the stators that straighten out the flow right from the fan. The fan as a, as a rotating assembly has the, the, the tendency of swirling the air into a circular motion. These stators straighten that air back into a straight flow out the back of the engine. This is the front engine case which is the main structural attachment point of the, uh, of the engine to the airframe. And this is uh, this here is a, a cutaway of, of, of side view of this fan case. If you were to split this this way and look at it sideways, this is what you would see. 
here's their case itself and this here is that Kevlar containment uh, ring going down the line from that we get into the compressor and the compressor is made of five vane assemblies and four rotating uh, blisks blisks meaning blade discs meaning that each individual uh, compressor rotor blade is one single part of the rotor disc so all of the blades and the disc everything is one piece so you have one disc here one blisk a second blisk third blisk fourth blisk so the axial section of the compressor and this is only this would be the, the it would have a mirror image of this to complete this is only a sideways cutaway view of one half of the engine so this is one rotor two rotor three rotor four rotor the rest of these are stationary veins guide veins so this is stationary this is stationary 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 and stationary the first two of these guide veins stator veins are the ones that pivot the ones that change angle those are the adjustable veins those are the ones we looked at earlier these are the levers that move each one so each vein is connected to a lever that moves it to change its angle and this would be connected to the unison ring unison ring that we also looked at this goes around the engine and as it rotates it moves all of those veins in unison hence the name unison rings so you have this is the axial portion of the compressor which feeds into the centrifugal portion of the compressor this would be the compressor rotor spinning grabbing that air spinning it up and blowing it radially outward into the diffuser and the deswirler this is what straightens out the flow from a radial direction more or less into back into an axial direction so this here is a centrifugal compressor single stage centrifugal compressor this is the actual com axial compressor right here this whole section the actual compressor let me uh, look at the specs matter of fact right here the axial compressor rotor produces a 6.4 to 1 pressure ratio so this part of the compressor here produces a 6.4 to 1 compression ratio there. The centrifugal part of the compressor produces a 2.5 to 1 pressure ratio. So this stage takes whatever pressure this is and bumps it up, multiplies it 2.5 times, giving you a total pressure output, a pressure ratio output for the entire compressor of 16 to 1. So 16 to one is the pressure ratio right here at the and the exit of discharge of the compressor now that takes us to the combustion chamber and if you look in here this here this is the combustor the combustor is what we looked at earlier this is all full of pinholes for the air and this is by the way this here is a fuel nozzle there's, remember there's 16 of these all around the engine clocked all the way around the engine spraying fuel into the combustor now if you look at this here there's all this air coming in through here is free to come around the combustor but it hits a wall here there's nowhere for it to go here and here so the only place that this air can go is through the combustor case this is the outer wall that we looked at this is the inner wall that we looked at so you have all the air rushing in through the walls 
and through here maintaining the flame all the burning of the fuel that is being sprayed out of the nozzle all of that gets burnt in here but it's blown away kept away from the walls and mixed in with cool air from the compressor and that heats up all of that air coming in through here heats it all up and expands it and the only way it can go out remember this is the highest pressure in the entire engine happens right here so that this expanded hot air is not going to go upstream it's going to go out the back this is where you have your nozzles guiding that airflow into the first stage turbine but before we get into the turbines let's look at a little more detail that uh that combustor so if you look at this here the combustor is just downstream of the the compressor discharge this is the combustor case with all the ports for the fuel nozzles which are here here's the case there's all your fuel nozzles and ta-da here's the compressor the combustor so all the air is coming from the diffuser blowing all around in here in through all the little holes and getting out heated up through here <clears throat> and here you can see that same combustor installed inside of the case with the nozzles the fuel nozzles in their proper proper holes there's that combustor encased inside of the combustor case so downstream of that we have the turbines and I believe I misspoke earlier I said the turbines had uh, the, I may have missed counted the stages of the turbines but anyway they serve the same same function the turbines have a uh, high pressure don't you two stages the high pressure turbine is a two stage turbine the low pressure is a three stage turbine so if we look at here this is we just left the combustor this is you have a compressor here, centrifugal compressor. Here's the diffuser blowing air into the combustor. Here's the other side of the, the other half of the combustor. Remember, it's a ring. And that first, you have nozzles, high pressure turbine nozzles, there and here, guiding the airflow through the first stage high pressure turbine. This here, which is also this here. This is one disc that we looked at. The two turbine discs that I showed earlier is these two. This is one, this is the other. So you have the nozzle feeding the air into, guiding the flow into the high pressure turbines. Now this, these turbines here are attached to a shaft. Which is connected to the compressor this is one spool the high pressure spool these two connected through one hollow shaft to the compressor that is the high pressure spool the low pressure spool continues and that is the turbine housing that we looked at the turbine section this here from here to here is what we looked at earlier this is the low pressure turbine section which has three stages of turbines here's one here's two here's three this is what we looked at looking in through the back of this this is the view that we had this is what we were looking at so these three low pressure turbines are attached to the shaft which is this shaft here that is the shaft that runs all the way to the front of the engine and attaches to the fan at the front of the engine. So this shaft runs inside of the low pressure shaft, runs inside the hollow low pressure shaft. So this is low pressure spool, this would be the high pressure spool.
Uh, it's actually something that I wanted to show you guys that I neglected, that I forgot. Let me go back. Bear with me for one second. Right here. The exit from the compressor, the exit of bypass, the, the bleed air. Bleed air, we have bleed air ports. We have two ports. We have one here, and there's more. But in this picture, we have one here and one here. These two ports are at different pressures. This one is taking air from the axial compressor which pressurizes this cavity here and leaves out through here so this is air from the axial part of the, com the compressor and then this bleed port, bleed air port is taking air from the centrifugal part of the compressor so this is at 6.4 to 1 ratio pressure whatever that pressure ends up being and this is the full uh, pressure 16 to 1 different functions in the aircraft and these are used for different functions different pressures I just wanted to point out those bleed air, bleed air ports where they're taking the air from and uh, last but not least this is the uh, outer bypass duct so you have a fan blowing air through the engine. Some of that air goes through the core. Most of it goes through uh, the bypass duct. This is the outer duct case. This would be the inner duct case. This here, the engine core lives inside of this. This fits over that, creating a ring around which is the bypass duct and this is the case that we looked at uh, a little earlier and then behind that here would be the jet nozzle here with the uh, reverse thrust doors that cl clamshell open and closed so again uh, as an overview and at the risk of making this video even longer than it already is uh, starting from the front of the engine all the way to the back we have here a this is the fan these are the fan blades that is a low these these uh, blades are described as low aspect ratio wide blades that means that they're very wide compared to how long they are these are very short stubby fan blades which you saw earlier so this is the your fan or single stage fan. These here are the stators. The fan is powered by this shaft that runs through the engine and is connected to the low pressure turbine section. This here is the bypass duct. This here is the outer case that we looked at. This here would be the inner case. We didn't look at this, it was a, collect, a collection of panels that weren't much to look at anyway, so I didn't show them. But I wanted to show, here is the inlet, this portion here, this is the inlet of air into the compressor. And the way this is shaped, this spinner here deflects any debris that comes in through, that is ingested by the engine. That comes to be it ice, fog, birds, whatever they can come through here and bounce off of the nose cone and fly the heavier objects are not going to make this quick turn and get into here they're going to bounce off here and fly off through harmlessly through the bypass duct and out the back of the engine without ruining the engine air is a lot lighter than any other fog and debris that goes into here so the air can make that quick turn quick turn here and get pushed into the compressor which this is the axial portion of the compressor which is driven and which feeds air into the centrifugal uh, compressor and this compressor assembly is driven by the high pressure shaft the high pressure spool which, which connects the high pressure turbines through a hollow shaft connected to the compressor and the low pressure spoon runs inside of that. 
So we left here at the centrifugal compressor, going through the diffuser and these swirlers, blowing air all around the combustor. Here's your fuel nozzles. The, com the combustor heats up the air through the burning of fuel, heats up the air, it ex expands and increases its speed out the back of the engine, spinning, spinning up the high pressure turbines, which are now taking some of that energy to draft the compressor. The rest of the gases come out through here, spinning up the low pressure turbines, which now spin the fan, producing most of the thrust that this engine produces. And then it goes out through the exhaust mixer, which is that flowery thing we looked at the end, and out the back. And in here is uh, where you mix up core hot air with bypass cool air. And all of that goes out through a nozzle at the back creating thrust. So there you go. Um, I know this has been a, a long video and it, for some, some of you guys this may be a boring video and if it is you've, you've probably moved on already but if you stuck through and you've made it this far I hope you found it interesting it's, it's a rare opportunity that, opportunity that I had to look at the individual components of the inside of one of these engines and I, I wanted to take the opportunity to share it with other guys that are interested in this like me um, again keep in mind that I am by far I'm not an expert on any of these engines I'm just an apprentice I'm an, as interested in learning about this as you are uh, and I wanted to share my, my journey with you guys so if, if, if I've made any mistakes or misspoke in any of these uh, sessions uh, please forgive me feel free to correct me in the comments I will be glad to accept it and then I'll, I'll learn from it we can only learn from from mistakes so if there's any corrections please feel free to to mention it in the comments and I'll, I'll take it to heart anyways uh, stay safe I hope you found it interesting and I hope you learned something from this stay safe and see you guys next time